When you've reached a level of success in your career, you'll have to start assessing what tasks are worth your time and what could be handled by others on your team. But let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk because to be an effective leader, you also have to understand that delegating a task is an opportunity to empower team members towards their own growth, which builds a stronger team, a more successful organization, and greater team loyalty. Look, it looks good on paper, but it's more challenging than it looks. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jollis. Today's guest, Aaron Salco, founder and creator of The Ninth Stratum, is a sales management professional with the innovative solutions-based company, Stephen Gould. For more than two decades, he's focused on human performance with intense concentration exploring how the science and mechanisms of human behavior, psychology, social interaction, and human psychology apply to performance. His new book is The Ninth Stratum, Your Guide to High Performance. Happy to have you with us. Welcome to the show, Aaron. What's happening, Robin? All good. All good. And it's really good to, good to have you here, my man. Hey, um, thank you for having me. You bet. And I want to dive right in. I, you know, we can't really dig into this until we've got kind of a working definition for this ninth stratum. So let's let's start with sort of a 30,000 foot look and then we'll drill down. Okay. So the ninth stratum is the daily operating level of high performance. And so what we've developed through the nine stratums of performance is a learning scale. And it's different than grades, you know, where grades elicit emotion um, or like the Likert scale uh, end of performance or end of end of year re performance reviews we all get. Right. And, you know, so what the nine stratums are is it's a stepping stepping tool to tell you where you are in the learning and application and mastery of performance based skills. Perfect. Spoken like a man who knows his elevator pitch. Well said, sir. Okay. Now, don't worry, because we're going to climb into it. But uh, let's start with, you know, uh, I'm, I always wanted to start, a, have a podcast called A Book Finds You, because we don't usually find it, it finds us. This is more of a concept that seems to have found you, but what drove you to develop this ninth stratum? It's a great question. You know, like many of us, we all have the desire to improve and really be the best in order to attain um, acknowledgement, promotion, fulfillment in career and life, you know, the basics. Uh, and also like many of us in leadership, you know, we want to have the best on our teams, you know, who, who does it, right? Or within right. our organization. Right. And so the word that we many times use to describe that idea of ourself as a, uh, you know, or the people we want working for us is high performer, right? But that word's elusive and it's undefined. And that's what started my journey about 15 plus years ago when somebody called me a high performer. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, Gen X, you know, I'm like, yes, you know, high performer. Like, awesome. Thank you. And then I began to digest it. I said, you know, did this person, what, what, what criteria did they use to deem me a high performer? You know, are they the governing body of high performance? And did they just set me up for failure? Because now I think I've arrived. Now I think I'm high performing in God knows what, but I'm, I'm high performing. And maybe I have so much more to go. And that was the day I said, you know what? We need to define this. We, it's, it's too loosely used. We need, it, we need a system to define it and a way to help people go from point A to point B. And I think you're smart, by the way, because um, even from a personnel standpoint, you know, in the world of training, we use the term we have uh, what we call unconscious incompetency, conscious competency. But a lot of people are actually unconsciously competent. So they don't know that they're doing something right. And what really kind of makes this more challenging is a lot of times management is sort of bred into saying, I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong, but they don't balance their feedback. So who's to say that we can repeat? a good a be a behavior that's effective. So I like the fact that what you've got there is really a way of kind of not just telling us what we're doing wrong, but maybe what we're doing right. Both are very valuable pieces of information. Yeah. Yeah. And Rob, you've probably seen it in the corporate world, right? How many times have we sat down with employees and said, hey, you know, this skill, you know, your composure is really affecting your performance. And, you know, maybe it's Mary or Mike and Mike goes, Okay. Uh, thanks for the feedback. How do I fix it? And we go, 
I don't know. Uh, go talk to go talk to Joe over there. He's really uh, he's really composed. He's got great composure. He'll he'll tell you. He goes to Joe. Joe's like, I don't have time to train you. I don't know how I don't know how to break down my process. I don't know what this is. And you know, six months later, we've got a pip for Mike, and Mike's half, uh, you know one foot out the door. That's yeah. not fair. We yeah. need to be better at being able to understand process of skills and then show people the pathway to improvement. Absolutely. And, you know, this talk to Joe thing, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's but it happens all the time. First of all, a lot of times Joe is also an unconscious competent. So yeah. it's like a golfer. He hits the ball far. Go yeah. talk to Joe. All right. Grip it. Rip it there. I mean, you know, he doesn't necessarily know how to communicate what they're doing. Matter of fact, in the world of sales, that's quite common where you have people that are just, you know, the born salesperson. It's great. But how does the how does that person mentor another individual or help them? And right. and add to that, Aaron, that you know, as a corporate trainer, if you don't send them to Joe, they send them to training. You know, yeah, go take a class on this or whatever. And exactly. you know, once again, I, I, you're to your point, Joe's got a foot out the door six months later. Doesn't know what hit him. Yeah, man. And you know, listen, like the nine strands of performance were designed to help people become self sufficient and self accountable in the learning application and mastery of skills. You know, the, the, you know, if, if I could go through the stratums real quick one time, you know, the, that first stratum is your unconscious incompetent, right? Okay. You, you don't know about a skill. You, you have no idea about it, and ne nor do you care. The second stratum is where you, you, know, you realize what the skill is, but you're maybe you're stuck in your ways. You know, you, you, don't, you, you don't really care how it's affecting your performance. That's a tough stratum to be in. Yeah. But you, that takes you to third stratum. Third stratum is when somebody says, hey, Joe, got to work on your composure, man. It's really affecting your performance. And you go, aha, okay, understood. I'm going to go work on my performance. And so that leads to that fourth stratum where they begin to seek the tools, the coaches, the videos, the books, right? They're seeking knowledge now. And then they begin to attain the knowledge in the fifth stratum where they read the book, they listen to the coach, they watch the video, right? And then they get to that sixth stratum. This is the hardest one where they have to begin to apply what they learned. And a lot of people get stuck in that fifth stratum. I always say that, you know, this world that we in, we're in with like Instagram and social media, we're, we're perpetually stuck in the fifth stratum because we think we're learning stuff, but we don't usually go and apply it in the real world. Right, right. But sixth stratum, you apply it and you're going to be messy and you're going to tell people, hey, I'm just trying this. I'm going to be messy. Well, that leads you to the seventh stratum, which is you're practicing. You're going to get a little bit more consistent, but you're still, you know, you still do it when you think you want to do it. And when you don't feel, feel like doing it, you don't do it. That leads to the eighth stratum where you start to begin your uh, develop your own process. You're more consistent. You're confident in the skill. You know what to do when, when you need to use it. And then that leads you to the ninth stratum where you've developed your own processes. You're highly competent. You're highly consistent. And the biggest thing in the ninth stratum is you can teach your process to others. Right. So that's the, that, that's the point of self-mastery. And just because you hit the ninth stratum doesn't mean you're over. You know, right. a lot of people that we see these high performers, they're always in search of like, how can I be get better? I did it one time. Great. How am I going to do it again? How am I going to repeat that that same thing? Or how am I going to improve it to be better than I was yesterday? Absolutely. And, and you know what? It's interesting. You are kind of mirroring a little bit of those conscious and unconscious moves. And sometimes the the irony of being an unconscious competent, in other words, almost, it's not exactly your ninth stratum, but basically now I'm doing it. I don't, I'm, I'm not a slave to the process. I've stylized it. It's I, I own it, yeah. but how long are we going to stay there? A week, a month, a year. Eventually remember we, that first one you mentioned, we don't know that we don't know. Yeah. And so um, there's no, no light goes off. And so I, I remember even learning these levels of behavior and realizing that, that it's more of a cycle than just levels and ninth and we're done with you, you know, smoke a cigarette. We're finished. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't quite work that way. Right. And, and to your point, I love that you said this is that I think these high performers always stay hungry. They, yeah. they're always looking for any tip technique to, the smallest little edge is what yeah. they're after. And the wannabes right below them, those are the ones that say, oh, I've, I've learned it. I'm good. You yeah. Know, yeah. Let's, let's both of us commit to each other. We're never going to be that guy. I don't want to <laughs> be that guy. No, no, no. Well, I love this. Knowledge. Yeah. And um, I'm assuming that, you know, right around that seven, eight, nine, we not only learn, but we're beginning to, to stylize it a little bit and understand that 
we bring different skills. Speak to that for a moment, if you would. Yeah, I mean, you know, so we all have our career skills, right? And and we understand what those are. But what we've defined here are 45 performance-based skills, and they're broken down into five categories. And in that seventh, eighth, and ninth, that's where you really get the traction. That's when that's when you begin to see that, oh, I can learn this. I can get better at it. And then that's when the light goes on and goes, oh, okay, now I can be a performance leader in this skill. Right. But it's that practice. You know, it's that consistent practice. It's It's doing things with intention. And not just doing it like unconsciously, like you said. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, even going back to go talk to that guy, he's pretty good at this. A lot of, a lot of times, um, even when those, the, the, the so and so-called mentors, and I love mentors by the way, but people just slap that title on anybody. It's, it's a yeah. little more to it, but yeah. the so-called mentors are sometimes um, don't know how to separate their style from the technique. So, you know, as a, as a lowly insurance agent with New York life at the age of 21, they sent me around with a guy named Bill Creekmore. Like, you know, we called him Creek. I was to walk behind him. Uh, you know, he was like, you know, you know Mr. Creekmore, when do you know when it's time to close? <laughs> Boy, you'll see it in their eyes. And I'm writing this down, you know, Look in their eyes, but, you know, but both <laughs> eyes, sir. I mean, I don't know what I, you know, <laughs> what am I writing here? But I'm, but now I'm trying to, to be somebody I'm not. Yeah. And so, right. I really do like to kind of remove that, uh, just push to anybody who's successful and say, no, we got to think this out just a little bit more and be a little bit more technique oriented so that we can introduce our own style to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's, that's what I've built with this, with this system and this organization too. It's, you know, it's, it's about teaching people, you know, the skills that are necessary, not only for their career, but for life to be high performing in life. Right. You know, it's great to be high performing in your career, but that's not everything. Right. Right. And, you know, so. Yeah. No, listen, um, I, I get a lot of times when I'm as a speaker, when I'm tying utilities, in other words, what's in it for the audience? Um, I almost always pair. This is going to help you be better on the job, which means this is going to make you feel a little bit more comfortable when you get home as well. You know, in other words, one does does absolutely tie to the other when we're more effective on the job, when we're happier in our work. We tend to be happier with our family too and with our oh own God. life. Absolutely. And, and, you know, like going back to those career skills, right? We've always seen it. Google actually did a really uh, interesting um, study. They, they, it was a couple of years ago, actually, but they took all the business decisions they made since 1998, right? The two founders of Google's, they, they wrote an algorithm and they wanted to find out what made the high performers of Google high performers, right? And so as they studied this whole, these, these algorithms, they found that it wasn't about the career-based skills or even STEM. It wasn't even about science, um, uh, engineering, mathematics, and the T, technology. No, I'm, I'm, I'm mathematics, right? Sorry. Um, it was about empathy. It was about composure. It was about the people who, you know, who had who had good communication skills. Like, and they realized that soft skills drove performance. And that's, that's, and I hate the word soft skills. Oh, you've got a fan with you. Yeah. I don't even use it anymore. I use, you steal this from me or come up with your own, but I actually have just eradicated the damn word because it's, it's an insulting term when you think about it. I call it performance skills. I wish the universities would teach them more, but uh, I, I worked 14 years helping people in career transition. If I've helped a thousand people, 999 of them were in there because their performance skills failed them. One guy couldn't count real well. Okay. His hard skills failed him, but uh, it's so crucial. I'm glad you're bringing it up. Is that in your book? Do you have a discussion about that in the book? We we've defined 45 performance-based skills and we, we broke them down to five categories. And we, we found these skills, by the way, Joe, by we studied high, you know, I, I wanted to find out what high performance is all about. Right. So what do I do? Like everybody in, in this, in this world that likes to study high performance, let's study the high performers. Let's study the people who really made it, you know, the Mark Cubans or the, or the Tiger Woods, you know, Kobe Bryant's. And then we started, I started to be, um, to, to really study the people within my network that were high performing in different career roles, whether they were project managers or CEOs, you know, I began to understand what skills made them great. And we came up with this big list, right? And but it was missing something. And I said, you know, we're missing a key piece of data here. Something's off because we studied the high performers, and yeah, we can find out what they did or what skills they had to, to make them successful. 
but there's something missing. And so I pivoted and we began to study the low performers because if you can imagine deficiencies are a lot more obvious when you can determine what is critical to success versus failure. And so in studying the low performers, they taught us the most. And then all of a sudden, 45 skills came to light. And we go, wow, 45 skills. Holy shit. What do we do with this? And then I said, we got to break this down. There's categories here. We started to see categories. And so we broke 45 skills, which can be intimidating, down into five, five categories of, of human performance. And we wanted to cover the, 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 the spectrum of human performance. So we have mentality, cognitive abilities, mastery of emotion, uh, personal health, and um, uh, relationships, like uh, uh, building relationships, like um, keeping relationships going, you know, all those, mm -hmm. those good things. And so, um, you know, now we have these five categories and we can easily begin to dissect where we, where we are strong, where we need to improve, and then using the nine strands of performance, begin that journey. Perfect. Well, it, you know, as a former Xerox guy, I, I, I so appreciate a process. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it's weird. I'm 40 years as a speaker and I'm still insulted when people go, oh, you're a motivational speaker. It's like, oof. Uh, look, if like we couldn't motivate, entertain, inspire, you know, I probably wouldn't be in business. But but it's the worst thing you can say to me, really, because I, I have a story to tell. I have a process to show. I have something repeatable and predictable that you can measure. That's the definition of a process. And that's the, exactly what you're defining right here, which is it, because, you know, there's a, a wonderful saying. Uh, you know, when you have a process, you have a way of measuring what you're doing. And when you can measure it, you can fix it. Think about how many times we've been kind of inspired of, you know, we just need you to feel better about whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. go, go just get excited there, Jolzy. Uh, you know, all right. Uh, but, the, you know, I was a big Zig Ziglar fan. Zig yeah, made me, okay, like, good. Oh, yeah. and, and and I still am, you know, and I, I had this uh, tape that I wore out called Prime the Pump. And it was a classic Zig Ziglar. And, it, you know, at one point I thought, well, you know, maybe I don't need Zig because, you know, I'm all process. Look, I could have the greatest process in the world if I show up and I don't have energy and enthusiasm and I'm not excited. It's not going to help me. So there's a place for motivation. I just I don't want to diminish it. But I so respect a process. Uh, to me, that's you're getting your money's worth. The book is called The Ninth Stratum. Your guide to high performance. I'm assuming I can get that on Amazon or any online bookstore, yep. all that good stuff. Yep, and there's an audio book too with some special features in it. Mm. Did you do the audio book? I did, and uh, audio books are really tough. <laughs> you know, lock yourself in a closet, read a book, and every time your stomach growls, uh, start over. <laughs> well, did you do it in a studio? I've done yeah, a did. couple of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how sensitive I know are. it is. Uh, <laughs> I know I had a good technician who really, thank goodness, because I, I look. I, I see some similarities in us. You're a high energy guy. Uh, yeah. You look here's what you're going to look like someday, but hopefully with your hair, okay? But um, I remember reading it. I was trying to be careful with the read, and I had a great technician who said, "Look, brother, just let it rip. I I know how to edit. You just keep going." And that's what will, in a sense, but people don't know it'll slow you down a little bit because you you when you're punching it, you're yeah. going to miss a few things. Yeah. And that, we don't want to be careful, but it also makes for a great audio book. You just, like you said, there's going to be a few starts and stops here because I'm letting it loose. Yeah. But uh, good. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad we, we, so we got an audio book, got an ebook. Here's a quiz for you. Do you have an enhanced ebook? Or do you even know <laughs> I think what I got it that is? far yet. <laughs> an, an enhanced ebook. And I believe the technology is still out there. What a shame. They don't sell well and they should. But an enhanced ebook is actually an ebook with, and then there's a legal definition. It's about 24 to 25 minutes of video that they can put inside the ebook because we're downloading the book anyway. Yeah. And and it's a certain technology where the files are small and things like that. But sure. some books don't lend themselves to that. Your book, I think, actually does because when there's a process in play, sometimes I could read a chapter and then maybe look at an example of it you yeah. you know which really saves us a little bit of time so just consider taking a, a look at that yeah. um and i i like i certainly understand the the low performers part i quite frankly learned a lot more from my bad managers than my good ones because exactly. a lot more was on display and you could yeah. you could see it yeah. and feel it <laughs> um but yeah. 
in your mind, and I believe I know the answer to this, but in your mind, can anybody become a high performer? Unequivocally, yes. Hmm. Yep. But there's only two things that I can't give you, you can't give anybody, not even their parents can give them. That's desire and effort. Without desire and effort, you're not going, you're not getting out of the starting gate. But if you have the desire and effort, we've developed a, a systematic pathway to, to, yeah, you can, you can take the steps to become a high performer, you know, and, you know, Joe, going back on the, the skills, right. You know, there was a criteria that we used for these 45 performance based skills. They had to be uh, taught, learned, applied and approved. Right. So it couldn't be this innate thing. It's like, you know, because you're six foot tall, you can be a high performer. No, you know, and, and so we dove down in these things. And, and so every one of these skills we've, we've, we, or either a performance leader that we've, that we've onboarded has defined their process to teach a skill. And I got right. called on, on one work ethic, right? That's our mentality. And, uh, you know, do you believe, I'll ask you, do you believe work ethic is a skill or is it, in, is it innate? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to hedge my bet here. I think some people are born with a work ethic, but I think it can absolutely be taught. Um, I do, uh, but but I'm going to have to, it, it's not, you know, there's going to be some inspiration in there. In other words, I, I've got to really sell that because um, that's a tough one. I mean, I've got three kids and they're all three different and, and I don't want to say too much more about it, but maybe some need to be taught a little bit harder, more than others, sure. but they can all get there. I'm not giving up on them as long as they don't give up on me. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I know I, I played both sides of the line there on you, Aaron, that's, but that's fine. it's fair. It's fair. You know, and you said the words, you know, I think you're born with it or I think you said something, yeah. but um, you know, and that, that's what I thought too, until I began to look at it and go, okay, if we could teach work ethic, if we could teach the process of work ethic, wouldn't that be beneficial to people who who are looking to improve their work ethic? And I began to look at my own my own self, and I said, you know, my grandfather, I thought I was born with work ethic, mm -hmm. right? My grandfather was a builder. I'm Gen X. He was he was a traditionalist. My parents were baby boomers, right? We worked. That's what we did. And so, as I as I began to look at this, I said, you know, I, I learned my work ethic from my grandfather, um, but he had a process to his work. You know, he was always 15 minutes early to the job. When he got into the job, there were no distractions. He was focused on the job, right? He never, he never, as a builder, he didn't, he didn't stop work until he completed the last thing he had to do. And then he cleaned his space, right? And so I, I took these, these lessons and I, I ingrained them in my own work ethic. And I, I looked at it and I said, wait a second. He had a process to his work. And if you look at just those four things, and there's more, trust me, but you look at those four things I just broke down for you, that's a process. Mm -hmm. And so you can literally teach that. And that's, again, this is part of what, what every one of these 45 performance-based skills has, has yeah. a process. All right. Yeah, let me stay here for a second because I'm putting on my sales trainer hat for just a moment. Yeah, no. uh, I believe everything you said. But do you have children yet, by the way? I do. I, I have 14 and, and 14 and 11, two girls. Oh, well, you're in the ball game. You know, if you right. said four and three, I would go, <laughs> talk to them later. But yeah. all right, for you, you're you're in the ball game. The, the reason why I said I'm putting on my sales trainer hat is I don't disagree with what you're saying. However, sometimes people need to be sold on the idea so that they'll accept that information. And to be clear, my definition of selling in a sense is really taking my idea, putting it in their brain and making them feel like they thought of it. In other words, if we can get them to want this, then the process, I, I'm with you. The yeah. problem is sometimes from a sales perspective or a parental perspective, we want you to do a certain thing. And so we're going to tell you how to do it. Right. And if they haven't made a decision that I want to change the way I'm doing things right now, I like the way I'm doing it. Then we're two ships passing in the night. So, um, that's where I'm coming from in terms yeah. of there may be a sales element to make sure we get somebody who actually wants this. Hundred percent. That does that goes back to that desire and effort. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if you're if you like you know the nine the nine stratums of performance, it's a language and it's a fun language. My kids make fun of me all the time. They're like, Dad, you're like fifth stratum right now. I'm like, thanks, thanks, kids. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> you know it's it, but it's something that's it's feedback and it's not feedback yeah. that hurts. You yeah. know, it doesn't make anybody feel bad. It just says, hey. 
Here's where you're at in the learning and application. Let's get you to this next stratum. And here's how to do that. Yeah. You made me laugh because uh, I remember just one of my books, but I, I had my wife read it before it was published and it was a sales book. And I knew I had a good book. And how did I know? First of all, she wasn't a salesperson. She's an artist and she got it. She got it so well that she was unhappy about a few things. She's like, now I know why we bought the place that we bought down here and why we got the car over there. You know, and I, I sort of outed myself. You showed her all your secrets, Joe. Exactly. But then I also walked away going, well, I got I got a book that people are going to understand because, yeah, right. you know, and and. That's what we authors have to do. We we know if we have somebody hungry for the topic and maybe already into the um, you know the topic a little bit, that's our audience. But when we reach somebody that's really kind of new and they get it, then we've done our job. Uh, so, uh, but I do remember, uh, you know, and, and to this day, I still get you're such a big talker about listening. When are you going to listen to me again? You know, and so uh, you'll get that too if you haven't already. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah. All right, let me let me we're coming down the home stretch, but I want to talk to you about implementation a little bit because uh now I'm taking off the sales hat and putting on the trainer's hat. One of the one of the toughest things that we got to do is well, well, A, we show up when we we inform, but we inspire and teach. Got it. But two, I think our ultimate report card is uh where are they three months from now? Yeah. Um uh, now. I'm, I'm going to pause that question for just a real fast one. Do you teach um, uh, workshops on this? Yeah. So oh, the ninth yeah. stratum, it's a curriculum. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let me jump back into the questions. Just what I wanted to hear. All right. So we have a curriculum uh, that's going to, and people are going to walk out. And if we put them on a lie detector and go, will you use the ninth stratum? Yeah. They'll, they'll say yes. And it's like, needles are, are not moving. They, they, they're telling you the truth. Six months from now, where are we? So walk me through a little bit in terms of now you've taught me how do you or me or both of us implement this? Yeah, there's a couple. So there's a couple ways. So when it, we're talking about organizations, what we what we'll generally do is we we do workshops and they're broken into the curriculum of, of the of, of the book. Um, and it is a pathway to high performance it starts with like, hey, how you're showing up. And then it goes into routine habits and discipline um, communication, both, um, uh, um, verbal, nonverbal and written, and then it goes into relationship building all the way up to visionary thinking. Right. And so it takes you on the, on this path, but during these workshops, what we form is these things called PPAUs, peer to peer accountability units. And so you have these pods within organizations that feed off each other and it's, it's accountability, it's, it's a support and it's also, you know, consistent feedback. So when we leave, you still have this group that's intact that helps to move the chains. In addition to that, we have a software platform and the platform is everything for high performance, right? So it is the nine stratums of performance. We have an assessment. So you can take an assessment on the 45 uh, performance-based skills and, and self-assess. Where are you in the learning and application? Do you have a process? Can you teach your process? And you can, you can find out what stratum you're at. Once you have the stratums, we built a performance library where you can go in and learn from experts of their process. And you can begin to try these new processes to improve your own, your own personal performance. And then we also, you know, we have some um, goal trackers in there. Uh, in, in the book, I, I write about the do it goal strategy. It's a lot smaller than the smart goal strategy. Um, you know, uh, define, organize, initiate, and the time it's going to take you, right? And it's, it just helps you stay on track of your goals. So that's, on, that's in the, the web app and the mobile app. And then also you have um, uh, you have the uh, yeah you have the nine stratums and uh, what else was there? Oh, the the routine habits and discipline. Five daily wins. Joe, how important it is is it to get up uh, at the bell? Right, no snooze button. Right, and when you get up, get your exercise in, get your personal development in, stay off of the cell phone, the the the, the work emails, stay off of the social media, the, all the distractions, the things that elicit emotion. Focus on you right? This is your time, your private time, be greedy here. Yeah. And then you get into your personal nutrition. And then once you're done with that, okay, go, go off to work, right. go do your thing. And so it helps you track that as well. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get it at, right at the end of the show in about three more minutes, but throw that website at me real fast. Cause I'm assuming that's where I can start tuning up, yep. getting into yep. this. What's it's the website? www.stratum-nine.com. 
Okay, so stratum, stratum is S T R A T U M. Yep. All right, all right, good. Okay, I practiced saying it, but I didn't practice spelling it. Okay. <laughs> uh, good. Well, outstanding. Um, listen, that that's going to be a litmus test for for you. Uh, yeah. I I have no doubt having 30 minute conversation with you, you're going to have no trouble firing people up in that room and, and you're merging good content with good delivery. When you hit that third one, which is, and we're changing cultures within this, these people in these organizations, because it's sticking, uh, the world's your oyster. I mean, that's, that's your ultimate test. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, congratulations. My, that's my desire and my goal. Well, you've you thought it out, my friend. Uh, a lot of times I, I get when I ask that question, yeah, uh, they can call us. It's just like, okay, well, that's one form of implementation. Uh, sounds like you've got it well thought out. Outstanding. Uh, last question for you. Any uh, mentors or people that um, really kind of help show you the way? Yeah, mentorship was, uh, you know, I, I had lost my father at age 17 and he was my ultimate mentor. Um, and so I really, I really, you know, went through life, you know, taking information and, and advice from a lot of people that I respected. I didn't really have one main mentor, to be honest with you. And mentorship was always that thing I, I, I desired. Then I realized, you know what, maybe there isn't that one mentor. Maybe everybody's a mentor to me. And 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 that's how I lived. And and um, let me tell you, it worked out well. My network surrounded, surrounded me with great people and right. they've given me great advice and they've, they've filled me with knowledge and, and their experience. And uh, you know, I can't thank everybody who's in my network enough. Perfect. Well, I, I tell you, I, I really appreciate you being on. All right. Give us that. Uh, give us that uh, website one more time. Yep. It's www.stratum-9.com. And that's S-T-R-A-T-U-M dash N-I-N-E. Okay. And the book is The Ninth Stratum, Your Guide to High Performance. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, my audience knows we, we, we specialize. We don't just buy a book. We write a review on the book. It means a lot to the author. So folks, remember when you get it, two, three sentences, we, we, you don't have to write a book either. We just, just read the book, put a few sentences out there and know that you've done something nice for another human being. Uh, so uh, congratulations. I'll say something else that I want people to hear. Uh, this is, I believe, my 340th podcast. This is the first guest I've ever had standing up. Uh, if he sounds energetic, he is, but it's not by accident. He's got a habit there. Um, and it's some, you know, we all should think about, you're going to talk to a client, maybe get on a podcast. You want to bring your A game and your energy. Uh, it's not an accident with this guy. He's standing and he's, he's bobbing and weaving. Trust me, I'm watching it. <laughs> so uh, kudos to you. Congratulations, Aaron. Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, I really Thank you for that. having me. I really appreciate you. Uh, thanks, man. Well, we'll do it again as well as we can next time, everybody. Until then, stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com. <laughs>